There is something exciting cooking at Mozilla, and it's called Llamafile. Llamafile lets you distribute and run large language models within a single file. Now, it is really, really cool, um, and you can use it quite easily. And if you remember, not too long ago, we made AI inference and um, large language models available within Superbase Edge functions. Now, the first one is GTE Small, that's bundled within the Superbase Edge runtime. And for large language models, you could use, um, you know, Olama to run that kind of within your, your Superbase Edge functions. And so today we're excited to have also support for Llama file within Superbase Edge functions. And so let's have a look how this works. So what we can do is we can download one of the Llama files. Now, this one is quite big. Um, so I decided, you know, to just download the tiny Llama. So you can just click to download the Llama file. And then one thing you have to do is when you have downloaded it, you need to add kind of the execute permissions uh, to actually be able to, you know, execute that file. And then uh, it's pretty much as easy as just running that Llama file. Okay, let's have a look how we can do this. So I have downloaded it into my downloads folder, and then I can just say tiny llama, uh, hit that off, and it is running my model locally, and then it's opening up my uh, llama CCP. So that's kind of the engine under the hood. And you actually get a little chat interface where you can sort of preset the prompt and things like that. And then you can chat and you can say, who are you? Fire that off and you can see I'm a chatbot designed for humans. Mm, yeah, okay. So you can chat with your Llama file here and you can see kind of the locks being streamed into your Llama file as that happens. So if you can see here, our Llama file is running on port 8080 and it is um, an OpenAI compatible API. So if you look at kind of the, the curl, so basically we can just run this localhost 8080 and then chat completions, and, you know, that's kind of the format of the open AI API. And so we can fire that off and then we can just get the requests back. But what we also can do is we can incorporate this into our Superbase Edge functions. And if you use, you know, kind of GTE small or, um, you know, Olama with Superbase Edge functions, Pretty much the same spiel. You just create a Superbase AI session. You set the model to Llama CCP. So that's what we're, we need to do here. And then what we uh, can do is we can just do our session run. And one important thing that we need to specify is kind of the mode. So by default, our mode is we have two modes here. We have the Olama mode. Um, that's currently the default mode for it to be backwards compatible. And then we have the open AI compatible mode. And so in this case, we're just saying stream faults to just get a response back. And then we basically just get the output and we can just response chase on the output. Okay, so one thing lastly that we need to do is we need to point it at our llama file. And the way we do this is just within env um, variable. So we can, um, configure it here where we say AI inference API host. So if we're running this locally with Superbase, that's our Docker host. Now, what's also exciting is there's actually a guide from Docker on how you can Dockerize Llama file, your Llama files, to actually run it then, for example, on, you know, fly.io or kind of other providers that allow you to just run Docker images. So that basically allows you to run Llama file and you don't even need GPUs for that. So if it's a smaller model, that's kind of the whole idea. You know, we have plenty of CPUs out there. So Llama file makes it possible to run your models on kind of that existing CPU infrastructure. So, yeah. So if you have, you know, deployed that somewhere, then you can put just your um, inference host somewhere on the internet here, which is using uh, Docker locally uh, on, you know, localhost. Uh, 8080. And so that's what we need to do. And then what we can do is we can run our Superbase uh, function locally. So we just need to make sure we provide the environment variables. 
Uh, and then what we can do is while that is spinning up, kind of the first time you're doing that, it's pulling down sort of the edge runtime. Great, and now our functions are being served on our localhost 54321. So that what we can do is we can just provide a prompt. The prompt here is just, who are you? And we put that in, and then what we can see is um, it'll work a little bit, and then it provides uh, a message back where it says, I'm here to help with your request. And you can see that um, we made a request to our Llama file in the background. Um, we can also do this as um, a stream. So we can do here again our model, very familiar if you worked with OpenAI compatible. And then we just get an async generator back and we'll just create a readable stream to kind of basically forward, kind of pipe through the text encoder stream through our function. So uh, what we can do is we can do that as well. So, um, you know, here, llama file stream, maybe we'll change that bit and we say, write a poem about Superbase. And we can copy that, fire that off, and then we will see our stream come in. Uh, there we are, um, kind of all the chunks. Um, now, we can't uh, really read it that quickly. Um, but somewhere in there is um, is a poem. But what's also exciting, um, so yeah, you can see kind of the locks here. Uh, again, let me clear that out. So what's also exciting is that we have, you know, since Llama file just provides an open AI compatible API, you can actually just use the open AI SDK. Um, to interact with your Llama file as well. Um, now, in order for to to make that happen, what you need to do is okay. That's a that's a pretty long poem. Now I'm gonna stop that. Um, what you need to do is so these two. Um, so this variable is required. Now, obviously, when we're running Llama file, we don't need to have an OpenAI um, API key. So you can just put that in like xxx but it is required for um, the SDK to work. Um, and then what you can do is you just say OpenAI base URL and you need to point it at your um, localhost 8080 slash v1. So that's kind of the base URL for um, the OpenAI uh, API. And then what you can do is you can, you know, literally just use new um, OpenAI client. We can get our prompt. We can say, okay, stream is true. And then we can just use the client chat, chat completions, create. And so, um, you know, in the case of the stream, we can then basically just, again, do um, a readable stream. And so if you, you know, if you're familiar with this, um, this is kind of our stream uh, chat completion chunk. So then you just get kind of a, a chunk here. And, you know, earlier you saw we're just streaming out kind of the entire response, but ideally you would get kind of your chunk you know, choices, delta, that's kind of where, where the content is to get the content out. Uh, and then again, we can do this, we can um, run this out uh, as a curl request. Who are you? And then we're getting our stream back. I'm a llama file. Maybe we can do this again. Maybe we can say write a short poem about Superbase. And that is our prompt fire that off. And there we go. Superbase database as a service, powerful tool. There we go. I think that's a really, really nice way to end. So yeah, um, Llama file support now within Superbase Edge functions. Um, really, really exciting to see kind of what's happening in that space with, you know, local AI, but then also you can take it, um, you can dockerize it and put it you know, on a server for yourself, if you wanted to do that. Um, so yeah, thanks, Mozilla. Really, really cool stuff. You're working on fully open source as well. Um, so that is great. And yeah, let us know if you've used Llama file before, you know, kind of what you're building, maybe with local AI. Um, it's really, really neat. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in. And see you next time. Bye bye.